Nam Chachu Vidas Tatu, Prince of Bhagavad Gita, 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 Prince of Bhagavad Gita,
Welcome to all the devotees online. Thank you very much for joining us for our Srimad Bhagavatam series. Today we are continuing Canto 1, Chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. Narrative instructions on Srimad Bhagavatam for Vyasadev. Om Gyanatimi Vandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swa Kadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Itam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Vanchakal Patarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vevacha, Patitanam Pavene Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo, Namo Namaha, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada, Rishi Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sarva Shastra Piyusha, Sarva Vedeka Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadiya Sarva Lokai Tripada Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabhu Kali Dvando Didaditya Shri Krishna Parivartita O Srimad Bhagavatam, O Nectar Churn from, from the Ocean of All Vedic Scriptures, O Most Prominent Transcendental Fruit of All the Vedas, O You are enriched with the jewels of all spiritual philosophical conclusions, O You grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world, O Light Breath of the Vaishnava Devotees, O oh Lord, you are the sun which has, a, which has arisen to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga. You are actually Lord Krishna who has returned among us. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varsha Surayate Sarvada Sarva Sevaya Shri Krishnaya Namastute O Shimad Bhagavatam, I offer my respectful obeisance unto you by reading you unattained transcendental bliss for your syllables rain pure love, God, pure love of God upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone for you are incarnation of Lord Krishna. Madhya Kabandu Mat Sangim Manguru Man Mahadana Man Nishtaraka Mat Bhagya Madana Karana Mastute O Shimad Bhagavatam O my only friend, O my companion, O my teacher, O my great wealth, O my deliverer, O my good fortune, O my bliss, offer my respectful obeisance unto you. Asadu Sadu Tadai Nati Nicho Chataraka Hanamun Chakada Chinmam Premna Ritkata Yospura O Shimad Bhagavatam I will go give up saintliness and saintly, who uplifted a very fell fallen. Please do not ever leave me. Please become manifest my heart, my throat, accompanied by pure love of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Janmadhyasya Yaton Vayari Taratas Charkeswa Bhigna Swara, Ene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaya Muyanti Yat Suraya, Ejo vari mardam yata vinimayo yatrati sargom nasha. Damna swena sadani rasta kuakam satyam param dimahi. O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudev, all hope of waiting personality of God, 
offer my respectful obeisance unto you. I meditate upon Lord Chi Krishna because he is the absolute truth and primal cause of all causes of creation, sustenance, and destructions of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahma, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the loser representation of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifest by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Chi Krishna, who is eternally existing in transcendental abode, which is forever free from the loser representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. All under one in this iron age of Kali, many but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. Narayan Namaskrityam Tarachayva Narotamam Devim Sarasotim Vyasam Tarojaya Mudiraya. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisance unto the personality of God in Narayan. Unto Naran Narayan, we should a supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadev, the author. The supreme occupation dharma for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy itself. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Jana Yatyas Vairagyam Jnanam Chayat Atmahavitikam By rendering devotional service under the personnel of Goddess Shri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Learn a transcendental who know the absolute truth calls non dual substance Brahman, Paramatma, or Bhagavan. Otherwise, born sages, by serving those devotees who are completely freed from all wise, great services done. By such service, one gains a further affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ryadanta Stoya Bhadrani Vidu Nati Surit Satam Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart, the benefactor of truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotees who have developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtues when properly heard and chanted. Nasta Prashu Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance in the class of the Bhagavatam and by rendering a service to pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of God who is praised for transcendent song is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Continuing Srimad Bhagavatam, based on the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Bhim Swami Shala Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So let us uh, cover some feedback uh, from the devotees. And you're most welcome to unmute yourself, or you can type in the chat. Please share with us uh, what you took home from uh, last week in terms of um chapter 4 verses 26 to 33 what realizations you had <clears throat> nalini kanta prabhu says a problem is not a problem it's the lord's mercy and feedback very good yes we should see everything that happens as feedback and we're going to be discussing that today and if we very advanced in Krishna concept, we'll even see it as mercy. Anything else? Shamananda Prabhu says, just like Vyasadev was not satisfied, although performing all welfare work, for all people, by giving the Vedas, etc., we also won't be satisfied if we perform mundane, charitable, humanitarian welfare work. We will only be satisfied if we glorify and serve the Supreme Lord. As they would say, hallelujah. Hare Krishna, definitely. 
Rafana Prabhu says, this satisfaction of Srila Vyasadeva, so agonizing that Narada came down to pacify him. Yes, and that discussion is going to continue today. Mother Lash, we should see problems as an opportunity to surrender to the Lord. We are not alone in dealing with the problems. Krishna will always do what is best for his devotees, either to teach us lessons through problems or to protect us. Yes, excellent understanding and realization. And uh, we have to appreciate this point that we're never alone. And that's going to come out again in today's sections of verses as well. Mother Achana Siddhi says, problems is an opportunity to surrender to the Lord. No matter how expert we may be, if we don't have the right source, all, all are irrelevant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful realizations and points. Uh, Emma Vati says, I was very inspired by hearing about Galera Prabhu Totokopinath. Also, uh, what uh, Sati uh, Sukhabai is so beautiful, correct. Uh, how uh, the Lord Prabhupada makes the point that not only is the living entity incomplete or not satisfied when he lacks devotional service or bhakti, pure bhakti, even the Supreme Lord. So even the Supreme Lord is seeking, hankering relationship, love. They say it's not money that makes the world go round, it is love. And this is true in essence. It is this loving relationship that everyone, every living entity, practically every part of creation, from the source to the expansions, from the source to the creation, is looking for this love. Therefore, the most powerful force in creation is love. And the epitome of that love is Shimati Radhawani. And we see how due to that love, huh? because Gadadar Pandi is also Shimati Radhawani. And therefore, the Lord uh, could not hold himself by standing there, not accepting Gadadar Prabhu's love. He had to come down. So such a beautiful example that we can always contemplate. The Lord will do anything right, to grab, to get our love. Mala says, Hare Krishna, there is only one solution to solve all problems of life, and that is pure devotional service, which must be unmotivated, uninterrupted, to completely satisfy self. Very true. Uttara Arani Devidasi says, the satisfaction, the satisfaction of the heart has to be searched beyond matter. Excellent point by Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much for all your wonderful feedback. Uh, these points uh, should become itched, etched, uh, ingrained in our heart, in our consciousness, in our mind. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be the sutras that basically uh, permeates every part of our consciousness so that we can pray to Krishna to realize them. And then we will see that realization through our actions, through our thoughts, through our speech. Let us continue with today's verses. So we are covering uh, chapter five, Narad's instruction on Srimad Bhagavatam for Vyasadev. We are now uh, covering this section where we heard about Srila Vyasadeva despondency and Narad Muni, his spiritual master, is going to come and guide him, confirm uh, his contemplation and guide him accordingly. So we're covering uh, seven, uh, one to seven verses, which is Narad glorifies Vyasa's work and inquires about his despondency. And Vyasadev admits his dissatisfaction about glorifies Narada and inquires about his deficiency. So I have a question. And the question is, who wants a more intimate relationship and a more ten, tangible, should be tangible, reciprocation from Sri Krishna? Who of you wants a more intimate relationship with Krishna and a more tangible reciprocation 
from Shri Krishna. You can just say yes or no in the chat. While you're typing, Nalinka said, it was wonderful to hear about Srila Prabhupada's ecstasy. We also want to satisfy Srila Prabhupada by trying our best to help him in our little way of service. Very good. Yes, yeah, so we see uh, practically every one of us, nearly every one of, our, of us, we want a more intimate relationship with Krishna and a more tangible, and more tangible reciprocation from Krishna. The question that follows now, that means this is an issue, this is a problem, this is a concern. Uh, we have a need and uh, that need is a problem. So if we take what we heard last week and put that, uh, we could ask the question, why don't we have Krishna's reciprocation to the degree that we actually want? So there's a problem, there's a challenge, there's an issue that we, soul, is experiencing. And we could discuss relative solutions. For example, it could be Krishna's problem. You know, Krishna is not reciprocating with me. And we could cover all other variables and all other perm permutations of the external uh, world in terms of this problem. But it is not Krishna's problem. Whose problem and where does the problem lie? And if we take uh, the point that we discuss, problem is feedback. It's also mercy. So what can we learn from this question about having more intimate relation with Krishna? And wanting that in relation to why Krishna is not reciprocating right now in terms of feedback, because Krishna is giving us feedback. He's not reciprocating. We have a need. He's not reciprocating. So what's the problem? Please share. Where is the problem? Any solutions? We have to work towards this and also Krishna can oblige and reciprocate if he wants. Good. Shamananda Prabhu says, lack of total surrender, good. Surrender, yes. Mother says, Mother Lessa, it's my problem. I need to clean my heart, focus on uninterrupted and any sense and service. Very good. Sukhita Goswami says, we must surrender. Yes. Um, King Prabhu says, uh, the problem is ours. Oshan Prabhu says, from ours, correct. So we are the problem, not Krishna. That means Krishna is giving feedback that I am not ready. We are not ready. And that feedback, if we accept it, we can thank Krishna. Thank you, my Lord, for giving me that feedback. Because if when the time is right and when we ripe, when we are ready, when we totally surrender, when Krishna is pleased, he will reciprocate, no doubt. So therefore, this problem, and we can deal with every problem like that, we can take it as feedback and see how we can address it. That means improve ourselves. And as you said, Srila Vyasadeva's example is uh, showing us how to address that situation. So we already have some answers, right? Surrender the six steps of surrender, the six aspects of surrender, cultivating greater surrender, cultivating greater desire, etc. And we can also pray to Krishna to please help us, please guide us. And Krishna will guide us appropriately. 
So we, uh, we should uh, be aware of the situation. We should reflect on our abilities and the outcome of what we've done, uh, look at possible reasons and solutions. And if we're sincere, this is how we're gonna deal with our feedback. If we're sincere, that means we're truthful. We honestly want uh, that. Then Prabhupada says, the devotees, are constantly, the devotees are constantly engaged in the Supreme Lord's service. The Lord understands the mentality and sincerity of a particular living entity who is engaged in Krishna consciousness and gives him the intelligence to understand the science of Krishna in association of devotees. So uh, if one is sincere, the mentality of sincerity is very important. If one is sincere, you will always find the path. You will always be directed uh, to the solution without fail. That's how uh, everything in this world works. You know, they say, I, if you know, if you desire, you'll get it, right? Which means if you sincerely desire it, uh, you'll get the uh, the door. Ask and I shall the ask and thou shall receive, right? So if you're sincere, then you'll get it. Now, once you're sincere, the Lord makes arrangements, and you will get guidance. And with that guidance, like Narad Muni appearing to Shila Vyasadev, you'll get validation. And when it's validated. If you are sincere, you will accept that guidance so that you can act to rectify or improve uh, the situation. And in this case, uh, get Krishna's, uh, get uh, Krishna's reciprocation to a greater extent. Prabhupada in the purport to Srimad Bhagavatam 1936 says, one can achieve the ultimate success of going back to Godhead if he is favored by the Lord's by the Lord sending his true representative. As soon as a true, rep true representative of the Lord is met by a devotee of the Lord, the devotee is assured a guarantee for going back to God at just after leaving the present body. This, however, depends on the sincerity of the devotee himself. The Lord is seated in the heart of all living beings, and thus he, sh he knows very well the movements of all individual persons. As soon as the Lord finds that a particular soul is very eager to go back to Godhead, the Lord at once sends his bona fide representative. The sincere devotee is thus assured of the Lord, assured by the Lord of going back to Godhead. The conclusion is that he gets the assistance and the help of a bona fide spiritual master means to receive the direct help of the Lord himself. I'll read it again. The conclusion is that to get the assistance and the help of a bona fide spiritual master means to receive the direct help of the Lord himself. So we desired to connect to the Supreme Lord again. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada came into our life. And uh, naturally through his different associates, servants, disciples, etc. Uh, we got connected to Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada uh, is now in our life through his bhakti and the purports he's guiding, which means Krishna is helping us in that relationship, in understanding that relationship, in, in strengthening that re, uh, reciprocation or relationship. So uh, receiving help through uh, the devotees, through a bona fide spiritual master, through a Nacharya like Srila Prabhupada, means direct help. Not indirect, direct help. So Krishna is giving us sufficient information and appropriate feedback to improve our relationship. The Lord has made a perfect process, has given a perfect process, made a perfect arrangement. And that arrangement is triggered when you are truthful and sincere. When there is sincerity, then Krishna, as the super soul in the heart, knows that. And therefore, the super soul in the heart will make arrangements to help you. And therefore, you'll come in the association of devotees. And you'll get many uh, shiksha gurus, many instructing spiritual masters that will guide you. And Prabhupada in the Science of Self-Realization says that that shiksha guru um, or 
you get many shiksha gurus and one of the shiksha gurus that will constantly instruct you in spiritual science later on becomes your diksha guru and this is krishna's program this is krishna's arrangement now yes we can interfere with that you can for example be canvassed to get a diksha guru uh, you can you know take a diksha guru out of some material consideration you know he smiled at me he gave me a garland he came to my house you know i like his dancing uh, or his indian etc you can interfere with the process and if you interfere naturally you will not get the end result there will always be a problem and the fact that you're not getting the result just like shila vyasadev was not satisfied that this satisfaction was the outcome that triggered him to think something is not right so when one is not getting an outcome then one should reflect why uh, i must have you know deviated from the process i must have did something that i'm not getting the the proper result because that's the law of the world and the the law that the lord has created whatever you sow you will reap so whatever action you put in you will get a consequent a corresponding equal uh, reaction and that is why it's always important to have good association to highlight or to reveal one's mind to someone who's far more advanced mature so that they can help us like narar muni is going to be helping shilavya sadev text 1 sutau vacha atatam sukham asina upasinam brihat shrava devar sipa praha viprar sim vinapani smayan iva sudugo swami said thus the sage amongst the gods narada comfortably seated and apparently smiling addressed the rishi amongst the brahmanas vyasadev so narad muni comes appears i uh, received respectfully by shila vyasadev and he is smiling shila prabhupad writes narada was smiling because he well knew the great sage vyasadev and the cause of his despondent as he will explain gradually vyasadev's despondent was due to insufficiency in presenting the signs of devotional service narada knew the defect and it was confirmed by the position of vyasa so the spiritual master in this case narad mun who is far more advanced and it we 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 heard how the lord makes arrangements to lead us to uh, the perfect spiritual master in this case shila prabhupad and the lord as the super soul externally manifests as the spiritual master and the lord as the super soul also reveals to the spiritual master the solution so in this case narad muni been far more advanced been a pure devotee of the lord mahabhagwat he is able to understand very clearly the the situation of the disciple in this case vyasadev and understand exactly what is the cause and what is the solution therefore he is smiling in bhagavad gita also uh, and the point is he is not smiling to mock shila vyasadev he is smiling uh, because he also knows that shila vyasadev also came to the same conclusion and that vyasadev is sincere and honest and he wants to rectify the situation and he knows the solution so therefore he is smiling we find even in bhagavad gita when arjuna surrenders to krishna then krishna prahasani vabarata krishna smiles he goes from being a friend who laughs with his friend from laughing to smiling to becoming grave and sober like a spiritual master so krishna also prahasani vabarata he also smiles because he knows that arjuna is falling into his plan and arjuna is also becoming a disciple and is going to inquire and krishna is going to guide 
Uh, we find Srila Prabhupada also um, uh, connected with the super soul, connected with Krishna, would get direction, would know, um, you know what to say, know, uh, you know what solutions to present. In so many cases, we find devotees uh, would desire some things, just like during initiation, uh, they would desire, uh, you know, I pray that uh, Prabhupada gives me a certain name. And without them even telling Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada would initiate them and give them an appropriate name. So in this way, we find so many amazing examples of Srila Prabhupada's connection uh, with the super soul, with the Supreme Lord. What to talk about even the super soul, even the deities would reciprocate with Srila Prabhupada. One time Srila Prabhupada uh, went uh, to a temple in Germany and uh, Srila Prabhupada was taking darshan of the deities. And the deities told Srila Prabhupada or complained to Srila Prabhupada uh, that they're not washing the paraphernalia, the plate where the, bog where the uh, boga is kept when they're offered to the Lord. Uh, they're not uh, cleaning the bowls and the trays nicely. So then Srila Prabhupada called the temple president while he was standing there in front of the deities and Srila Prabhupada said, uh, uh, who's, who's doing the backup? Because the deities are complaining that they're not washing the paraphernalia properly. So the temple president immediately went um, into the uh, backup room, temp the altar room, kitchen and found, you know, found out who was doing the, clean the, the cleaning of the paraphernalia, washing of the paraphernalia. And it so happened that uh, he's holding a such an unmarch. Uh, at that time, he was a uh, new bhakta and he joined Krishna consciousness. And he was busy. He, in, uh, he, he tells us he was washing. And it so happened that his grandfather was ill on his last, on his deathbed. And in German culture, when a grandfather desires a wish, then generally the children, they want to uphold that. So his grandfather called him home. And he knew that if he goes home, then his grandfather is going to tell him, uh, don't join the Hare Krishna movement, leave there. So Marge was you know, concerned and this was uh, plaguing his consciousness. His mind was disturbed that should I go? Shouldn't I go? If I go, he's going to tell me this and I don't want to leave. So he was, because he was distracted, he was inattentive. He wasn't washing the paraphernalia properly. So Jen, you know, we cook in ghee for the Lord and ghee is uh, sticky. So if you don't wash it properly, then the you know ghee stays there. So this is how the Lord complained to Srila Prabhupada. And when Maj, uh, as, a, as a bhakti, when he heard this, he could understand the, the glory of Srila Prabhupada, that Srila Prabhupada is so in tune, so connected uh, with the deities, with the super soul, that Srila Prabhupada will know exactly what the situation is. So to get someone like that who's connected means Krishna's mercy, that they can guide us perfectly. Srila Prabhupada in a lecture says, such a great personality also becomes morose. So Sage Narad is trying to enliven Vyasadev. Vyasadev was learned, not, on, not ordinary learned. He is the incarnation of God, Narayan. He appeared for spreading the Vedic knowledge. Therefore, Naradji, it is stated here, uh, smayan, smayan Eva. Smayan Eva means, uh, Smayan means smiling, that just a great personality also becomes, such a great personality also becomes morose after giving so many contributions, literal contributions, still he was not happy. So it is wonderful. So therefore he's smiling. Smayan Eva. So Narad Muni is also amazed that such a great personality can also become morose. And he's smiling, probably saying, he wants to encourage Vyasadev. At the same time, he's amazed. It's wonderful. And it's wonderful because such a great personality who is Narayan himself, who's an incarnation of Narayan, literally incarnation of Krishna, empowered incarnation, he can be in the situation which would mean that it's Krishna's arrangement also. So in different ways, one can see the situation and one can learn different lessons from this pastime. Text 2. Narado vacha 
para para sarya mahabaga bhagavata kachit atmana paritusyati sharira atma manasa evava addressing yasadev the son of parasar narada inquired are you satisfied by identifying the body or the mind as the object of self realization so immediately narad muni starts he doesn't beat around the bush he doesn't flatter vyasadev immediately addresses the issue he addresses the problem are you satisfied by identifying the body or mind as the objects of self realization vyasadev uh, gave the mahabharat and focused that on a uh, fruit of activities to satisfy the body and mind so narad muni is immediately uh, diagnosing is giving us a diagnosis this was a hint robert says by narad to vyas regarding the cause of his despondency vyasadev as the descendant of parasar a great powerful sage had the privilege of having a great parent parentage that which which should not have given vyasadev cause for despondency been a great son of a great father he should not have identified the self with the body or the mind ordinary man with poor fund of knowledge can identify the body as self or mind as self but vyasadev should not have done so one cannot be cheerful by nature unless one is factually seated in self realization which is transcendental to the material body and mind so the goal is to rise above the physical plane the mental plane and to come to the spiritual plane why because that is your plane that is your nature and therefore if you don't come to your nature you will always have a difficulties problems incompleteness you will always be dissatisfied unhappy frustrated sooner or later it's only a question of time because you can only get flickering happiness flickering satisfaction flickering pleasure flickering uh, peace in this material world which is temporary and based on the material platform it will not sustain itself one needs to rise oneself to the spiritual platform and that way be situated on the spiritual platform uh, to be cheerful shilavyasadev is our uh, narad muni is telling shilavyasadev uh, that you coming from a great lineage uh, your father is parasar and therefore it behooves you uh, to uh, not have fallen prey to this problem we know that krishna is arranging this problem because krishna wanted the vedas to be uh, given in this form in the mahabharat so on one hand we know it's krishna's plan but at the same time uh, those who are connected to a great great lineage to a great spiritual dynasty then it behooves them to act according to that wisdom that's coming in that line similarly we are connected to chila prabhupad and therefore it behooves us to act in a glorification of chila prabhupad not to act in ways uh, that people will say oh just see uh, this is uh, you know a this is a follower of shila prabhupad how is he acting how can he act like this so we should always be conscious that we act in such a way that prabhupad's fame is glorified we don't act in a way that they start criticizing shila prabhupada because if we see what shila prabhupada has given us we see the lineage that shila prabhupada is coming the, uh, the tradition that shila prabhupada is coming it's glorious if we connect uh, and understand the acharyas that are in our line the goswamis that are in our line they are intimate associates of krishna uh, direct intimate associates of krishna lord chaitanya is rather in krishna so our lineage is exalted is great is super extraordinary it's not it's not just your one of your traditional organizations that come into this world due to the force of time or karma no uh, we are connected to a very privileged tradition culture the cyclic line 
And therefore, understanding that, we should always try to protect ourselves in how we act so that our tradition is amplified, the, or the glories of our tradition is amplified. So this false identification, this is the root cause of all problems. She'll probably often say sometimes a skin disease. This is the root cause. And as long as we identify with this physical body and its combination, or we identify with uh, the subtle body, we will always have challenges, difficulties, and problems. This is the problem. This is the root of the problem. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego, all together, these constitute my separated material energies. Then Krishna says, besides these, O mighty armed Arjuna, there is another superior energy of mind, which comprises the living entities who are exploiting the resources of, material, of, of, the, of this material inferior nature. So Krishna says, these material elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, my intelligence, and ego, they are separated material energies and they're inferior. And we, who are superior energy of Krishna, we are identifying with this inferior material energy, and we're also trying to exploit. And because of this, you will always guaranteed to act inappropriately, and you are guaranteed to be plagued with confusion, doubts, misery, frustration. It's just uh, the outcome of false identification. <clears throat> if we consider that intelligence gives us the discriminatory power to understand what's right and wrong, we find that in, if we take these elements, there's a hierarchy. The highest of all these energies, eight energies, false ego. That's the highest of the energies. Then comes intelligence, lower. Then comes mind. Then ether, air, fire, water, and finally earth. So the highest energy is false ego. Intelligence is under the false ego, under the uh, influence of false ego. False ego means I identify with the physical and the mental plane. I identify with the body and the mind. So that intelligence being under the influence of false ego, being under, can never help me rectify the situation. I need intelligence that's above false ego. I need a intelligence that's beyond the false ego. And that means the intelligence of the pure devotee, intelligence uh, of the Mahabhagat, intelligence uh, of Srila Prabhupada and Krishna. So when I get intelligence of Krishna coming through disciplic succession, then that intelligence, when I engage uh, on uh, the physical and mental plane, I can act appropriately to fulfill the actual needs of the spirit soul, who is uh, the actual living entity. So this is how Srila Vyasadev is revealing to Nar uh, sorry, uh, Narad Muni is revealing to Srila Vyasadev that you've, uh, are you happy with, mis with, with misidentification? Because that's what you did. You just directed everyone to strengthen their relationship with the body and the mind. And by doing that, you've taken them away from Krishna rather than bringing them to the absolute solution of uh, connecting themselves completely to Krishna. Now, Srila Vyasadeva naturally gave us the, the Vedas and the Mahabharata, which are beneficial to some degree and important in society to help people be elevated gradually. Bhagavatam is giving the ultimate solution. Instead of going gradually, lifetimes of lifetimes after lifetimes, uh, just give the perfect solution. You are a spiritual being. You need to connect with the Supreme Lord in loving devotional service. You need to connect to Krishna because Krishna is the original source. And when you connect to the source, you become happy. You become perfect. You become satisfied. So that's what Bhagavatam is directing to. 
and Shalavyasadev is hinting, uh, Narad Muni is hinting to Shalavyasadev in terms of the solution. Text three. Jignasitam susam panam apite mahad adbutam krita kritavan bharatam yastvam sarvarta pari brithitam. No doubt your inquiries were full and your studies are also well fulfilled since you have prepared a great and wonderful work, the Mahabharata, which is full of all kinds of Vedic sequences elaborately explained. So Narumuni is glorifying Shila Vyasadev's achievement. No doubt uh, he has presented the Vedas in such a wonderful way so people can understand and be benefited. Prabhupada writes, the despondency of, Shila, of Vyasadev was certainly not due to his lack of sufficient knowledge because as a student, he was fully in, inquired about the Vedic literatures as a result of which Mahabharata is compiled with full explanation of the Vedas. So it's not a fault of the outcome or uh, the fact that, uh, or, or in relation to his knowledge, he's uh, well-educated in terms of uh, the knowledge that he presented and there's no lack of knowledge. Text four. Jignasitam adi tamcha brahma yatat sata sanatanam tatapi socha Sochas Atmanam Akritarta Ivapar Prabhu. You have fully delineated the subject of impersonal Brahman as well as knowledge that derived therefrom. Why should you be despondent in spite of all this, thinking that you are undone, my dear Prabhu? Prabhupada, in, when, he, when he was lecturing on this verse, huh, Prabhupada says, See, we also uh, refer to others as Prabhu. So this is uh, very, this is tradition. This is ancient, it's not something new. When we say, you know, Hare Krishna Prabhu, we address someone as Prabhu. Uh, here we find Shilavyas, uh, Narad Muni uh, is addressing Shilavyasadev as Prabhu. Mm -hmm. uh, very respectful. Right? So this is a parampara, we're coming in disciplic succession. Only pure love will satisfy. Srila Vyasada uh, Prabhupada writes, the Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutra compiled by Sri Vyasadev is the full deliberation of the impersonal absolute feature. And it is accepted as the most exalted philosophical exposi exposition in the world. It covers the subject of eternity and the methods are scholarly. So there cannot be any doubt about the transcendental scholarship of Vyasadev. So why? should he lament. So the Brahma Sutra, the Vedanta Sutra that Srila Vyasadev gave, uh, naturally explaining the full deliberation of impersonal absolute feature. Here, Srila Jiva Goswami describes that we see that the impersonal aspect, even if you understand the impersonal aspect or if you're situated in the impersonal aspect of the Lord, we covered um, Brahmeti, Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Sabhyate. The Vedanta, Vedanta Sutra describes that the absolute truth is complete. And Srimad Bhagavatam describes it's complete in three features. The impersonal feature, the localized feature, and the personal feature. The, the Brahma Sutras focus on the impersonal feature and explains and elaborately describes the impersonal feature which Shilav Yasadev gave. But situated in that feature will still not satisfy one. That is why Vyasadev was also not satisfied. One has to rise above. Even on the localized platform, you will never be satisfied. There's still a lack. You have to rise above to come to the personal feature of the absolute. And we are given this personal feature right from the beginning. Prabhupada says the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is giving the personal feature right from the onset. Now, he's not saying the International Society for Super Soul Consciousness, International Society for you know, Universal Consciousness. 
Brahman consciousness, light consciousness, no. International Society for Krishna consciousness, God as a person. And who is this God as a person? He is Krishna. And every living entity, whether you accept or don't, you are connected with Krishna. Whether you agree or not, you're connected with Krishna. Because why? Every living entity, as Krishna says, is superior energy. You are fragmentally connected to Krishna. You are a fragmental part of Krishna. You are expanding from Krishna. You are emanating from Krishna, complete units. Therefore, every living entity, every part of creation is connected to Krishna. And when we come to that source, that connection, when we come to Krishna, that's when we are completely satisfied. Just like with this embrace that Krishna is embracing, this is when we are completely protected, completely cared for, completely sheltered in this embrace. And this embrace is what every living entity is hankering for. And therefore, Vyasadev uh, is uh, been glorified that uh, you've given the Vedanta Sutra, which is wonderful, but still, why should you lament if it's, it was such a glorious contribution to help people? Why are you still lamenting, Prabhu? Why is there a lack? There has to be a reason. So in this way, Narayana is giving uh, different questions, presenting different questions so that uh, Srila Vyasadev uh, can also appreciate and understand um, the situation. He's, uh, another point is also he addressed him, Narayana addressed him as Prabhu, even though he's a disciple. We find Srila Bhakti Senor Maj also, he would not see you know, his disciples as disciples. He would offer obeisances to his disciples. Whenever he, his disciples would come in front of him, he would, thus, he would offer obeisance and say, that's me, I'm your servant. And the disciples would be very uncomfortable with it. Therefore, they would offer obeisances very far away from him because they knew if they offer obeisance in front of him, he's going to offer obeisances. Srila Prabhupada also saw his disciples, uh, not as his disciples, but uh, as his Guru Maharaj's disciples, which means that they are my Guru Maharaj's servants. And that is how he was seeing them and reciprocating. Uh, I need to look after uh, my spiritual master's servants. Uh, he has sent them. Uh, it, is their, it is his property. Therefore, uh, Prabhu, therefore, Dasosmi, this consciousness, right? It's not that they are mine. They are my disciples. Therefore, I can exploit them. Therefore, I can uh, use them the way I want. No, uh, this connection uh, with Krishna, with the disciplic succession, and always seeing even the disciples as property of uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, anything that's the property of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I, as the custodian, am meant to look after that, those, uh, that property. I'm not the master, I'm not the controller, I'm not the owner. Krishna is the only owner. The Vedas, vast body of knowledge that Srila Vyasadev compiled very, very expertly, the Shrutis, he gave the Shrutis, he gave the Smitis, the Shrutis, uh, which is uh, coming, written down or heard by the sages, and then the Smitis, which are written down, the histories, which are written down. So uh, many branches, many facets of the Vedas are uh, given. So Srila Vyasadev, no doubt, uh, did a, an amazing service to humanity by helping humanity uh, through the Vedic knowledge. Always be alert and on guard. Srila Prabhupada says that Srila Vyasadev himself could fall or could, be, could do something and not be satisfied. That means even he could experience a challenge. If Vyasadev, who is the Supreme Lord himself, could experience difficulty or challenge with all his expertise, his knowledge, uh, his qualification, his purity, what to talk about us? mortal, living, conditioned, living beings in this world. 
we have to be very, very careful. We heard how Sukadev Goswami was also described that even though he was liberated, even he was very alert of the material nature, that he didn't even want to come out from the womb of his mother after 16 years. He didn't want to come out because he was alert in regards to the danger of the material energy. So we also have to be very, very alert. No one should become proud, no matter how advanced one is. Uh, we should never become complacent or casual. That is okay. No, if you ever fall prey to this, it's okay. You know, complacent. Uh, you know, you become slack in your chanting. Uh, you will find, as we describe, Maya will take, uh, will enter, and overpower you. Prabhupada was giving the example. Prabhupada was at the at the harbors, and they were on a morning walk with the disciples. And Prabhupada showed them that in the harbor there was this big ship, massive ship, and it was being pulled by a small tugboat. So Prabhupada pointed to the situation there. Said, "Just see, such a huge ship." been pulled by such a small tugboat. How is that possible? Why is that? So the disciples are trying to figure out and understand why and gave different response. Probably let's see, uh, because the ship's motor is off, that tugboat can pull the huge ship. Similarly, that tug, uh, Maya is like the tugboat. And as soon as you switch your Krishna conscious engine off, you will be pulled by Maya, even though she may be very small, she'll pull you. So you have to be very careful to keep your uh, machines, your motor running. The Krishna conscious engine should always be fired up, as they say. I want to be fired up in Krishna conscious. I want to be uh, careful, I want to be vigilant, I want to be alert. I protect myself and always shield myself. Uh, Prabhupada in the purport 2.113, Prabhupada says, a fully responsible man should always be conscious of the prime duty of the present human form of life. The activities to meet the immediate necessities of material life are not everything. One should always be alert in his duty for attainment of the best situation in the next life. Human life is meant for preparing ourselves for that prime duty. So we have to be focused. We have to be alert to what is the actual need? What is the actual necessity? What is the actual prime duty? And that is to get a better situation in one's next life. Srimad Bhagavatam 8.838 purport. While the demons fight to satisfy their own senses, devotees engage in devotional service to satisfy the senses of the Lord. The members of the Krishna Conscious Movement must be alert in regard to this point, and then their preaching of Krishna Conscious Movement will be successful. So here, Srila Prabhupada is making very clear in the purport. Uh, the demons, they satisfy their senses. So if we also, as uh, devotees who are trying to practice Krishna Conscious, fall prey to satisfying our senses, not connected to Krishna, uh, then that uh, is dangerous. We want to always be alert uh, where our senses are going, on what sense objects our senses are falling prey to. We always want our senses uh, to come in contact with prasadam, Krishna's mercy, in the form uh, of eatable foodstuffs, prasadam, or in a form of the flower that we smell uh, that's offered to the Lord, uh, or in uh, seeing the deity, beautiful deity form of the Lord, or in cleansing the temple of the Lord, practical service. So our senses should be always engaged in the prasad, in honoring the prasad of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or in relation to Krishna. We have to be alert of that. Then Purport 10 to 6, Prabhupada writes, properly speaking, everyone should always be alert and fearful of material existence. But although everyone is prone to be affected by the ignorance of material existence, the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, is always alert to protect to the protection of his devotees. 
Krishna is so kind and affectionate towards his devotees that he helps them by giving them the intelligence by which to exist in this material world without forgetting him even for a moment. So we have to be alert and fearful of Maya, of the material energy. And therefore, when we recognize or when we are aware or when we get feedback, that this is Maya, this, be careful, this is dangerous. See? Then we immediately have to take heed. It's not that one will slip immediately. You know, all of a sudden, right, you fall. No, this, the stage of falling is gradual. It starts off with a thought. Simply, you know, or it starts off with a contact of the sense with the sense objects. That first contact, that first spark, one has to be vigilant. One should always be aware of that. And as soon as you see that spark, fan it off or extinguish it off rather. Put some water on it. Don't fan it. Because if you fan it, it's going to become an inferno. And uh, that may be uh, dangerous. Then in Adi Lila 1251, beautiful verse. When one's mind is polluted, it is very difficult to remember Krishna. And when remembrance of the Lord is hampered, one's life is unproductive. So beautiful. Purport Prabhupada says, a devotee should always be alert, keeping his mind in a sanguine state so that he can always remember Lord She Krishna. I had to look up this word, sanguine. Robert given this written word. Sanguine means positive, op, uh, optimal, optimistic. So one has to make sure that the mind is positive, uh, healthy, optimistic, and not become not polluted by uh, different elements in this material nature. So if Vyasadev has to be alert, otherwise he's going to fall prey to the situation. What to talk about us? We should always be on guard and be alert. Text five. Vyasa uvacha asteva me sarvam idam yakto kya yoktam atapi natma varitus yatemi me tan mulam avyaktam agada bodam richama richama head vatma. Bhavata Bhutam, Chilavyasad have said, all you have said about me is perfectly correct. Despite all this, I am not specified. I therefore question you about the root cause of my dissatisfaction. For you are a man of unlimited knowledge due to your being the offspring of one Brahma, who is self-born without mundane father and mother. So after Srila Narad Muni described the situation, presented few questions, Srila Vyasadeva as the disciple responds. And Srila Vyasadeva responds, right? he says, Astya eva me sarvam idam tya yoktam. All you have said about me is perfectly correct. So Srila Vyasadeva is accepting Narad Muni's uh, diagnosis because naturally he's the guru. So a bona fide guru will know exactly what is wrong with a bona fide disciple. Then he says, Tatapi anatma paritushyate me. Despite all this, I'm not pacified. So yes, you've highlighted these different aspects and I've achieved, you know, what I want to do in terms of the outcome, but still, I'm not pacified. Then he says, Tan mulam avyakta gada bodham. I therefore question you about the root cause of my dissatisfaction. Because as long as you don't uproot the issue right at the root, if you don't uh, remove the root cause, then just cutting the top without removing the weeds means that the plant will grow again. Uh, priors, cheetah, different activities they're describing the various, this is what they do. Uh, they don't remove the root cause, the desire for sinning. 
which is exam given uh, by Maharaj Parikshit also uh, the scribe in act of instruction as well, that we have desires. And if we don't remove those desires, we will fall prey to them again. So Narud Muni is, uh, uh, Vyasadev is requesting Narud Muni, you please remove my despondency right at the root cause so that will never happen again. For you are a man of unlimited knowledge due to your being, the offspring of one Brahma. We self born without my mundane father and mother. Narod Muni told Shila Vyasadev uh, that you are coming, you know, your father is Parasa Muni, coming in a great lineage. You should, you know, it does not be of you to be despondent. Shila Vyasadev is responding, actually, you are more glorious. Why? Because you are connected to Brahma. You are coming from Brahma. Therefore, you are even more glorious. So, in all respects, the disciple Vyasadev is accepting Narod Muni as far more qualified, far more elevated. And he is able to guide and remove uh, or help gu guide the disciple to remove the issue and the problem. Srila Prabhupada writes, in the material world, everyone is engrossed with the idea of identifying the body or the mind with the self. As such, all knowledge disseminated in the material world is related either with the body or the mind. And that is the root cause of all despondencies. Now Prabhupada is giving a different slant, a different angle. We already mentioned that as long as you are living on the material plane, which means the plane of the physical body, you're thinking you're the body, and you're trying to fulfill the needs of the body, thinking they are needs, you will be despondent. As long as you're living on the mental plane, thinking that what you're thinking, feeling, and willing is all about you, you will be despondent. Now, whatever knowledge you get in this material world, which is either related on the body or mind, nothing else, uh, you will, uh, it will be a breeding ground for despondency. And this is why you see the material nature, you see the current state of affairs in this world. People are unhappy on all different levels, uh, distressed, miserable on all different levels. Why? Because spiritual life is practically not in the focus. People are not interested in spiritual life. We are spiritual beings, therefore spiritual life is meant to be our existence. And you could extend it further, not just spiritual life, but devotional life. That means just to be on the spiritual plane is also not perfection. To be on a spiritual plane infused with devotion to the Supreme Lord, that is the perfect platform that we should be living by on. So any situation in this material world, unfortunately, is going to be the cause of despondency. And therefore, Srila Vyasadev is requesting Narumuni, you please tell me uh, how I can remove uh, the root cause of my dissatisfaction. Robert continues, this is not always detected, even though one may be a, the greatest erudite scholar in the in materialistic knowledge. And we see in the state of affairs uh, in this material world that people are getting distracted from the actual solution. Maya presents the next version. This version didn't work, try this version. Upgraded version, definitely will work. Oh, that, sorry, uh, that didn't work because we missed this feature. Now it's a new version. So in this way, the version keeps getting upgraded, but if you upgrade ignorance from version one to version two, it is version two of ignorance. And therefore, no matter how high you, at what level you upgrade ignorance, the root cause is going to be despondency. And that is why the direction that this material world is going to, the solution that people present in this material world, the uh, knowledge that people present in this material world will never lead one to becoming free from despondency. The Bhagavatam is the way uh, and the light, the knowledge that's directing the living entity to a spiritual foundation. It is good, therefore, to approach a personality like Narada to solve the root cause of all despondencies. 
why Narad should be approached is explained below. So the next verses are going to be why Narad Muni should be uh, the person to approach or representatives of Narad Muni. Right? How, why, why can they solve the problem and not anyone else in this material world? Another aspect of Vyasadeva's response, we see how Vyasadeva is saying, uh, all you have said about me is perfectly correct. So I accept, I agree. This means that Vyasadeva is humble. He's not, you know, he's not responding, yeah, but Gurmaj, you don't know. Uh, you know, you haven't experienced it. Uh, you know, you're speculating. Oh, I know better. No, what I did was right. No. Vyasadeva is humbly accepting Narad Muni's in, uh, diagnose and humbly submitting himself. So Prabhupada talks about this uh, humility that's required. And a few quotes I've given here. Humility means intelligence. The humble and the meek owns the kingdom of God. It says it's as difficult um, so if, it's a, if you don't have this quality of humility, then uh, there is no question of one entering the kingdom of God. Why? Because there's, they, the, the, the attitude that one will have is I know it all. And therefore one will not submit to a person like Narad Muni to, be, to be guided. And because you will not be guided by a representative like Narad Muni, you will never be able to perfect your life. The qualities of humbleness and meekness lead very quickly to spiritual realization. In Vedic scriptures, it is said, quote, to those who have firm faith in God and, spiritual, and the spiritual master, who is his representative, the meaning of the Vedic scriptures is revealed. So this faith, this humbleness, this humility is key in perfecting one's life. Then Prabhupada uh, also says, humble, in, a, in conversation, Prabhupada is humble. But if you do not follow your spiritual mass instruction, if you follow others, then where is humbleness? So humbleness means to accept uh, those who have the knowledge, who are coming in disciplic succession, who know the truth, like Srila Prabhupada's purports. Srila Prabhupada's purports are bona fide instructions for us. And therefore, uh, we should simply accept Srila Prabhupada's guidance and in this way perfect our life. Um, this connection in disciplic succession is important. If the spiritual master is not repeating the instructions of his spiritual master, then we should understand that that is a deviation. So when we connect to the disciplic succession and know what Srila Prabhupada is giving us, then we can also identify uh, the instructions which are aligned to the disciplic succession or a deviation from the disciplic succession. Text six. Savai Bhagavan Veda Sam Samasta Goyam Upasito yat purusha purana pare parava resh parava resho mana mana saiva vishwam shri chatya avatyati guner asangai asanga. My Lord, everything that is mysterious is known to you because you worship the creator and destroyer of the material world and the maintainer of the spiritual world original personality of God, who is transcendental to the three modes of material nature. So Prabhupada said, this is why Narad Muni should be approached. This is why uh, those in disciplic succession should be approached. And this is the perfect solution. Prabhupada writes, a person who is sent to and engage in the service of the Lord is the emblem of all knowledge. Such a devotee of the Lord is full, in full perfection of devotional service, is also perfect by the qualification of the personality of Godhead. As such, the Eightfold Mystic perfection, 
eightfold mystic uh, eightfold perfections of mystic power, as the city constitute very little of his godly, godly opulence. A devotee like Narada can act wonderfully by his spiritual perfection, which every individual is trying to attain. She Narada is a cent percent perfect living being, although not equal to the personality of God. Dear Prabhupada is shedding some very important uh, points. First is those who are perfectly connected to the Supreme, surrender to the Supreme in pure devotion, they have the power to act wonderfully. And Prabhupada says uh, that they act wonderfully because of that connection, because of that empowerment, not because of the eightfold mystic perfections, which constitute just his in a small godly opulence, because he's described that the mystic cities, uh, they fall at the feet of the pure devotee and surrender to the pure devotee to be engaged in Krishna service. So the pure devotees, they have mystic powers, but they don't use or exploit the mystic powers to attract people. Because if you get attracted by mystic perfections, when the mystic perfections stop or they're not presented, they're not shown, then you, uh, then your fate also wanes. We find Srila Prabhupada never displayed or attracted uh, souls through his mystic perfections, even though he had them. One time the devotees were walking on the beach and they were thirsty. So Srila Prabhupada, they asked Srila Prabhupada, Ask for coconut water. And in India, they sell uh, co you know, like coconuts, tops, and then you make holes and you put a straw in coconut and water and you can drink. So they got that, bought that for Srila Prabhupada, and they gave it to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada started drinking the coconut water. And Prabhupada drank to his full satisfaction. And then Srila Prabhupada handed the coconut to the servant who was next to him, walking next to him. So when the servant got the coconut water next, you know, after Shil Prabhupada drank, he was so happy, ecstatic. Why? Because Prasadam, Mahaprasadam, scared remnants of Shil Prabhupada. So he didn't hesitate at all. He just, uh, you know, uh, attacked the coconut water, started drinking as much as he could, practically wanted to finish it. And all the disciples were a little envious of him. You know, they were, ah, damn, I, we didn't get it. Because they know how much coconut water Prabhupada drank to his full satisfaction. So there will be little coconut water. And the devotees said, well, okay, whatever little is, I'm going to drink. So he drank. And he drank and drank and drank. And he was satisfied. And there was still coconut water. So then he ended it to his friend who was next to him. And his friend was ecstatic. Wow, there's something left for me. And he drank. And believe it or not, that coconut went through all the disciples that were there on the morning walk and they drank for their full satisfaction. So Prabhupada has mystic powers. And Prabhupada would display his mystic powers uh, intimately, in, inter, intermittently. Now and then, Prabhupada would reveal. But it wasn't to attract. One time, there's, in a, in a, in a, in a, this, in a darshan, somebody said, Shri Prabhupada, you know, why don't you show us Miracles, you know, magic. Why don't you show us miracles and magic? Prabhupada pointed to his disciples and this is my magic. Those who are uh, womanizers, you know, eating just practically a living, you know, a life where they're eating meat, uh, having intoxication, drugs, illicit sex life. Now they've given up everything. This is a miracle. This is magic. Right? So that's uh, the real magic. And therefore, Prabhupada makes an uh, interesting point here. This constitutes very little of his godly opulence. It's not the focus. The focus is how Narad Muni can transform and influence people's lives by his devotion. How Srila Prabhupada was able to influence the lives of millions through his devotion, through his connection with Krishna, through his love, his relationship with Krishna. That when that relationship is alive, uh, that relation dynamic, that relation transforms. So like that, uh, we want to uh, be empowered that when we come in front of anyone, we are able to influence them by becoming devotionally inclined. 
to Krishna. This is how the pure devotee uh, is empowered. And Prabhupada says, a devotee like Narbuni can act wonderfully by spiritual perfection, which every individual is trying to attain. And, if, and we're going to hear about Narbuni's life, how he achieved Krishna and the devotion that he has for Krishna. And we can also follow in the footsteps of Narad Muni. And Prabhupada then warns at the end, Shil Narada is a 100% perfect living being, although not equal to the Supreme Personality of God. Prabhupada always wants this because to think you are God, Prabhupada says, is the last snare of Maya. So we should always keep that in mind. We are never God. We are part and parcel of God, eternal servants of God. Last verse for today. Tamparya tan. Arka iva trilokim antas charova yurivat masakshi paravare brahmani dharmato vratai snatasya me nunan nunam alam viksha vik vi chakshwa. Like the sun, your goodness can travel everywhere in the three worlds. And like the air, you can penetrate the internal regions of everyone. As such, you are as good as the all pervasive super soul. Please, therefore, find out the deficiency in me, despite my being absorbed in the transcendence, in transcendence under disciplinary regulations and vows. So Nara Vyasadev glorifies Narad Muni. Uh, he's just like the sun. He can travel everywhere in the three worlds. Narad Muni is described to be this. Uh, traveling spaceman. He can travel anywhere at will to any place and it does not need an invitation. Mm -hmm. This is Narad Muni, a very, very exalted personality uh, that he's got license to go to the spiritual world, to the material world, to any universe at any point in time, uh, even to uh, hellish planets, wherever he wants to go for service, Narad Muni can travel. Mm -hmm. uh, traveling spaceman. In fact, a few times he even came into a kirtan. One time there was a kirtan and Narad Muni, the demigods were there in the kirtan and Srila Prabhupada was laughing like anything. And after the kirtan, the disciples were asked Srila Prabhupada why he was laughing like that. And uh, Srila Prabhupada said, oh, didn't you see the demigods? And didn't you see Narad Muni? And they were laughing uh, the way you people were dancing. So uh, Narad Muni would visit Srila Prabhupada and he would visit many devotees across the creation. He's like the sun, he can travel. So he's glorified by Srila Vyasadeva. Prabhupada says, transcendental realization, pious activities, worshiping the deities, charity, mercifulness, nonviolence, and the study and studying the scriptures under strict disciplinary regulations are always helpful. So they're helpful. Srila Vyasadev uh, adhere to these and they are important, but they're not the most important feature or facet of the process of Krishna consciousness. These things can help, but ultimately uh, our pure love and intent, our devotional intention, this is most important for spiritual advancement, for loving devotional service. In relation to the spiritual master, Robert says the secret of success is to please the spiritual master. Shalavyasadev is sincere, he's accepted, he's humble, he's accepted uh, the diagnose, he's humble, he wants to find the solution and he's happy to rectify uh, himself. And in the following verses that's going to come, we're going to hear about uh, uh, Narad Muni's uh, diagnose or solution, so to speak, and how Shila Vyasadev adheres to that solution. Uh, in this beautiful conversation described in The Great Transcendental Adventure by Kumapu, I'd like to read in relation to fulfilling the, 
the instructions of the Spochu master, like Srila Prabhupada. So it's, he writes, Prabhupada was encouraging and affectionate in his dealings with Dipak, who now served as Melbourne's temple's full-time pujari. Dipak, in turn, reciprocated by trying to render menial service. He was in a habit of daily bringing Srila Prabhupada offered articles from uh, the morning deity worship, garlands, tulsi leaves, and other sacred items. Just like I explained, our objective is to always keep our senses engaged in honoring Krishna Prasadam. So here we see Prabhupada always honoring uh, the Prasadam of the deities. Prasad means mercy. Deepak often marveled at the depth of Srila Prabhupada's spiritual emotions. The day before, as he sat beside him in the car, Prabhupada suddenly started laughing. Turning to Deepak, he said, do you know what this name Deepak means? Deepak, Deepak bewildered by the sudden manifestation of Prabhupada's mirth, mirth could not answer. It means, uh, it means to enlighten, to bring light into darkness. Prabhupada laughed some more, leaving Deepak to wonder further at the cause. Now Deepak came with some questions. He wondered what food preparation should be cooked for the deities and when they should be offered. Prabhupada answered at length, specifying types of foods that Krishna liked to eat at various times of the day. Deepak had a couple of other more personal questions. Srila Prabhupada, he asked nervously, could you give me the secret to spiritual advancement? Deepak was hoping for a mystical, esoteric answer. Yes, replied Srila Prabhupada gravely. Chant the holy name, 16 rounds every day. Never stop chanting, and you are guaranteed spiritual advancement. Deepak had one more question. Srila Prabhupada, what can I do for you? Prabhupada's answer was completely satisfying. Your service attitude, he said, is enough. So Krishna, through disciplic succession, uh, re recommends full surrender, full dedication. And Prabhupada is extremely merciful to put us on the path that at least we start chanting 16 rounds, then never stop chanting. We, will, uh, we are guaranteed to make spiritual advancement. The attitude of our service, if we, uh, we start, uh, we have the, the proper attitude in our service in terms of pleasing Hari Guru Vaishnava Bhagavata Gita. When we have that pleasing attitude to do what is pleasing for them, that attitude, Prabhupada said, is enough. Why? Because that pleases him. By pleasing him, it pleases Krishna. You then get more mercy. And then that attitude increases more and more with greater and greater service. And automatically you will find that you will make spiritual advancement guaranteed. So the foundation in terms of how or what, where we situated, that spiritual foundation based on proper guidance coming from the pure devotee like Narad Muni, like Srila Prabhupada, situates us on a beautiful platform where we can never, ever fail on this path of uh, Krishna consciousness. As long as we stay alert and cautious and move in the direction that pleases them. And the last point in terms of how Srila Vyastev glorified the exalted position of Narad Muni, we find Srila Prabhupada in the same case uh, was glorified by so many of his disciples uh, because of his exalted, extraordinary uh, personality and position. For example, one uh, devotee, uh, elderly devotee, a mother, she uh, saw, you know, she heard about Srila Prabhupada, and uh, if, I, if I recollect, Prabhupada was in India, and she was there was going to be a whole program, and the whole aspect and she was you know there anxiously waiting she had she had heard about Srila Prabhupada and she was going to see Srila Prabhupada for the first time and Srila Prabhupada enters into uh, the hall and starts to walk down the aisle 
and she is uh, you know, in the, you could say the path of the aisle uh, pathway. So she sees Srila Prabhupada and she's so happy and she falls flat to the ground offering dandavats, not realizing that she's in the pathway blocking Srila Prabhupada's path. And Srila Prabhupada keeps walking and walks on her hands. Steps on her hands and walks across. And she never felt the pain of Srila Prabhupada's weight. In fact, the touch of Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet on her hands was completely ecstatic, blissful. It was like flower petals. That's when she recognized Srila Prabhupada's glorious position. And it became even more evident because after Srila Prabhupada, there were some servants that were behind. And sure enough, you know, because she quickly offered obeisances and Prabhupada just stepped over her, uh, the disciples also in time couldn't stop and they also walked over her hands. And she felt the weight of their, uh, they, she felt their weight on her hands, which was very painful. So then that even though they walked on her hands and she felt painful, but that made her even more ecstatic because she could realize and had a clear graphic comparison that no doubt she wasn't dreaming of Srila Prabhupada's uh, position in terms of uh, his, you know, he, he, he did not cause any pain on her hands. So we, you know, like that many disciples experience Srila Prabhupada's extraordinary personality and how they share, just as Narad Muni is glorified here by Srila Vyasadev of his extraordinary position that he can, he's like the sun that can travel, he's like the super soul that knows everyone. So Prabhupada also uh, been connected, Krishna would direct him and empower him and he would know and in this way uh, guide the disciples on this beautiful journey of Krishna consciousness. Thus ends uh, these sets of verses uh, for today. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Next week, we're going to be covering Canto 1, Chapter 5, verses 8 to 22. We may do it in two parts. Uh, now Narad Muni is going to respond. And if you look at if you compare the purports to the verses we covered today, and you compare the purports for next week's verses, you will see that they are very, very important verses because Srila Prabhupada's purports are lengthier, meaning they are very, very important purports. Itai go promenande hari hari ball. Any questions or comments? Shaman Prabhu says, thanks Prabhu for Srila Prabhupada's pastime on the coconut water and the whole program. Does this pastime with Vyasadev, Narad Muni, Shrimad Bhagavan play out exactly like this every time in many yugas and universes? Interesting question. Uh, and <clears throat> the answer is, uh, depending on Krishna's desire and Krishna's will, the pastimes may vary. Uh, we find that in the pastime of Lord Nishingadev, Lord Nishingadev kills Hiranyakashipu in different ways. Um, and it's described that in different yugas, Hiranyakashipu in some case may even forget to ask certain things. And then the Lord will take advantage of that. So different ways, even Krishna, Krishna Kalya, pastime of Krishna Kalya, there are different variations. Sometimes Kalya is banished. Sometimes Kalya is tamed. So like that, uh, with all the pastimes, there may be variations. And same thing with Narad Muni and Vyasadev, uh, there could be uh, variations. 
Madhu Tarat Evidasi says, thank you very much for the wonderful class. Thank you. Shama says, thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you, Mina, for your appreciation. <clears throat> All right, if there is no question, tomorrow is the appearance of Lord Balaram. And Srila Prabhupada says, we need the mercy of Balaram. We need spiritual strength so that we can practice Krishna consciousness. And by uh, pleasing Balaram, we get uh, spiritual strength so that we can uh, please Krishna. Balram also represents Guru, Adi Guru. So we need the instructions of the Guru to uh, attract Krishna, become attracted to Krishna. So tomorrow we should focus glorifying Balaram, uh, try your best fasting till noon and uh, take advantage of hearing the glories of Balaram. Mother Lash says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for Krishna Kata. My query is Narad Muni is described as sent percent. Does this mean he is equivalent to Lord Brahma at 78% qualities? So the, so the, uh, <clears throat> the position of Narad Muni is that he is a loving entity. He's also an empowered incarnation. But he's, he's a uh, Shakti Vesh incarnation. So you got two different categories of living entities. You got living entities like me, conditioned soul, who are eternally conditioned souls and part and parcel of Krishna. Then you got empowered, or you could say pure souls who are perfected beings, who then fully manifest their spiritual identity then you have empowered souls who are now higher in level than those who are perfect. So Narad Muni, he is empowered with Bhakti Shakti to preach Krishna consciousness. Okay, so therefore, in that sense, he is also described to be sent percent, huh? like the Supreme Lord, like Srila Vyasadeva. They are empowered incarnations of Krishna. When the Lord empowers anyone with his specific potency, then naturally they represent Krishna non-different, cent per cent. Therefore, the property uses that word cent per cent. So they are different in that sense. Lord Brahma, uh, when we're looking at the Brahma, there are five types of Brahmas in different universes. Depending on the type of Brahma, uh, they obviously have different levels of cent percent connection to Krishna. There's a Brahma who's materialistic. There's a Brahma who's, uh, you know, very ritualistic. There's a Brahma who's like a yogi. There's a Brahma who's like a devotee. And there's a Brahma who's a pure devotee. So the Mahabhagavad pure devotee of Brahma is also uh, can be said to be cent percent like the Supreme Lord. Why? Because he's acting as a perfect trans a transparent via media and he can be empowered like in our like in our case our brahma is narad muni uh, our, our our brahma is harida stakor harida stakor he is lord brahma and he's namacharya he's completely empowered to chant the holy name so in that sense cent percent uh, they can act and be as powerful as the supreme personality of godhead so in that sense, cent percent. Hare Krishna, Rasavas Prabhu, Hare Krishna, Madhachana Siddhi. Will Srila Prabhupada appear, will Srila Prabhupada appear in each Kali Yuga to deliver fallen souls? Yes. So just as Krishna appears in the 28th cycle, Lord Chaitanya appears in the 28th cycle, uh, then Srila Prabhupada also appears to spread the message of Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. he, he, he is a part of Chaitanya Leela. Uh, we are all now connected to that pastime. So 
like that, wherever our Lord Chaitanya appears, he will send Srila Prabhupada to assist in connecting the souls to his lotus feet. Bhafana Prabhu, how is fasting till noon measured in actual time? From what time to what time? So from the time you wake up in the morning till midday. And ideally, you want to, uh, you want to try to uh, fast from grains. Right? You know, depending on your health, etc., you could take water, but you totally fast from grains. And ideally, you also want to break your fast with non-grain. And you want to observe non-grain fast for the whole uh, t- for the whole titi for the whole period because the appearance day is the whole day. So we honor the whole day by observing a ekadasi fast, and we honor the appearance day, which is at midday. So you know we, that means no ekadasi, no food at all, right? Till midday, and then we break our fast with non-grain until uh, the next morning. When we wake up in the morning, we can take grain again. So that's generally the system. Hare Krishna Prabhu, awesome class. What Shila Prabhupada's Lila, thank you so much. Happy Balan's appearance day. Krishna Jan Master and Shila Prabhupada's appearance day to all. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kinka Prabhu. Uh, yes, and uh, all uh, blessings. May Balaram, Lord Balaram bless you all with a pure devotion to his lotus feet and to Lord Krishna. And next week, uh, we will continue with verses 8 to 22, uh, hearing about uh, the wonderful answers that Narad Muni is going to share. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Gwantara Chimra Bhagavatam ki jai, Nithai, go Pramanande, Hari Hari Bo.